three, two, one. Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the graphic on the section 1.1 lecture guide. So we're going to start this off by looking at an example, is my coin fair? So we've been doing this one a lot recently uh, and the idea here is to give you an illustration of what it means to use a chance model and why we would use one. So we've talked about this a little bit already, is my coin fair? So let's just kind of review. What's the population here? I have a coin, I want to know if it's fair. Well, what do I look at to try to understand that question? I would have to look at all the flips. Right? If I really wanted to know if my coin was fair, I'd have to flip it and flip it and flip it and flip it and keep flipping it to try to understand that question. Okay. So we've also already gone through asking what the parameter is. So let's say I'm comfortable saying, okay, I want to know if my coin is fair, so I'm going to just flip forever. I want to just flip, 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 flip. Okay, let's pretend I've done that. I flipped forever. How do I actually take that information, all those coin flips, and distill it into one number that helps me answer my question, is my coin fair? And what we decided on was we were going to do the proportion of heads. If I could calculate the proportion of times I got heads, I would know my answer. All right, what would it look like if I was to have a fair coin? I would get the proportion of heads. Remember, pi is our parameter for proportion, is 0.5 or 50%. Okay, so if I've got a fair coin and I flip it forever, I'm going to get heads 50% of the time. All right, but what if it's not fair? Because really, when you're asking this question, you may be interested if you have a, a fair coin, but the other flip side is you could be asking, what if my coin is not fair? I might want evidence of that. Maybe I'm doing some game and I keep losing, so I feel like I'm being cheated. So I gotta figure out if this person has a not fair coin. So if that was my mindset, what number for pi would make me believe that the coin's not fair. And this is an issue because the answer to that is lots of stuff. My coin would not be fair if pi was 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 99%, 98%, tons of answers, 1%, 10.5%, 99%. Eighty-three percent. All of these would be answers to pi that would say that the coin's not fair. But think about that. I need to get evidence to try to figure out what pi is. That's my goal in this in this set of statistics problems. Is I want to know what pi is because if I know pi or I know my parameter in more general, then I can answer my question or at least get evidence for it. Okay, so if I'm looking at not fair, I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out what I even want to show because all these numbers are so different. So where does a chance model come in? Well, what it says is, forget about not fair for a second. It basically says, this is too much for me to handle because it, it's, it's too abstract in terms of, I, I have so many different um, options here. So what, is, what do I do? I say, okay, you know what, I can actually get a handle on this scenario, right? I have got pi equals 50%. I can handle that. So what I do is I say, okay, well, if my coin was fair, so at this point to get to the chance model, go here, I am going to assume that the coin is fair. Okay, so I'm going to just say, this coin I have here, I don't know, but let's assume for a moment that it is fair. What does that mean? It means that in the long run, it should get heads 50% of the time. Okay, I think we can all agree about that. So how does that help me? Well, if I want to know if my coin is fair, I have to take a sample 
of the population. Remember, saying all the flips you could ever do, or never do, is nice, but we can't actually do that. We can't get our hands on it. So what we have to do is we have to take a sample. Remember, population big, sample small. So in order to do that, we would take some number of actual coin flips. So for example, maybe we would do 25 coin flips. That's our sample, right? And let's just make something up. Let's say that we ended up with 12 out of 25 heads. So 12 heads out of the 25 total was our statistic. So that's the statistic. Don't know why I'm quoting that. That's our statistic. What do we do now? Well, now the question is, I have this actual statistic. I have these 25 coin flips. Does my real data fit the coin being fair? If the coin is fair, does my data fit that? And so when I'm saying fit that, I'm saying specifically fit the model. And we're going to do a, a little thought exercise or experiment in just a bit to show you that this way of thinking is actually very natural. And you do this all the time, just in your life constantly. You have a scenario. You have a model in your head how if that scenario is true, how th other things should work. And then you get in data and you compare that to that model. And if it fits your model, if it seems like, yeah, this is reasonable, you say, okay, all's good here. But if the data you get doesn't fit your assumptions, you think, hmm, something must be wrong with my assumptions. That's all we're doing here. We're saying, let's make an assumption about my coin. Let's get some real data about it. And then let's see, does that data fit what I was assuming to be true? So that's where the chance model comes in. The chance model is this model that shows us what it should look like if your coin is fair, if your assumption's true. So I've already done a, a little uh, distribution of sample statistics here. I had the computer assume pi was 0.5, do 25 flips, and I had them do that 100 repetitions. So that's how I got this picture here. So here's the question. If this is what it should look like to do my 25 flips a whole bunch of times, then what am I going to say about my actual coin and the sample I took? Well, 12 out of 25 is right about here. So that's a dot right here. And my question is, does that dot fit the model? And so you can't see me doing air quotes. But what I mean by that is, does it seem reasonable, plausible? Does it seem to be something that occurs frequently in this model? And I would think so. The 12 out of 25, which is about 48%, is right about here. It's right smack dab in the middle. It seems to happen quite frequently, or at least other statistics that are close to that also happen very frequently. So it fits. It fits the model. It doesn't make me think, hmm, this is weird. It fits right in there. So I look at that. I say, OK, fits the model. And what I end up then saying is I've got no evidence against my assumption of fair. I assumed it was fair. I got some data. My data fit. <coughs> OK, I'm thinking it could be fair. That's it. That is the whole of the logic of statistics that we're going to be using. So just to kind of reiterate it, I have a question. I find a population. I find a parameter to measure something about that population. I want to know what's going on. I make an assumption about that parameter. I put an actual number on it. I collect some data. That's my sample. And I compare my guess with my actual data and ask, does it fit? If it fits, OK. If it doesn't fit, hmm, something else must be going on here. All right, so let's take a different example then. What if instead, and we'll do this in green. 
What if instead my statistic was I ended up with 24 out of 25 heads? Okay, what if that happened? Well, I think alarm bells in many of your heads are just going off right now saying, oh, that seems weird. But why does it seem weird to you? This is the key thing that, that you have to really think about and try to, to work on is that your intuition, a lot of you, is very good for this. If my coin's fair, it seems really weird to get 24 to 25 heads. But, but why is that weird to you? It's weird because you know that for a fair coin, if you were to flip 25 times, that you would expect to get somewhere closer to one of these numbers. And again, you know it's random, so there'll be some luck or unluckiness about it. But in general, you shouldn't be so lucky to get 24 or so lucky to only get one. And the way that you use a chance model to see this is you take your statistic here and you go look for that on the chance model. 24 out of 25 would be a dot over here. And you ask yourself, does that dot fit the picture? No way. There isn't even out of the 100 times the computer did this experiment, it's not even one time it got even close to 24 out of 25 heads. And so once you have that, you say my statistic my sample does not fit my fairness assumption, that gives you evidence that something's wrong with my assumption. And so again, this is the way the course is going to, to work. We're going to change some things up as we go, and, and we'll go and talk about you know different things that are kind of offshoots of some of this, but this is the key idea. If you can nail down this thought process that we've explained here, you're going to be golden.